One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video, guys. What's up, guys? It's Harry Oss here. And today I'm just going to be kind of going over some trade recaps and a VWAP reclaim lesson. Um, I realize it's been kind of a little bit since I did a video, but we did have the podcast and I did do a video right before that. And I mean, this week for the most part was really pretty slow. Um, so I mean, there wasn't, there's not really any big lessons in this video. There's not really any uh, crazy trades. There's not really any uh, stuff like that. I just wanted to kind of just recap a couple, uh, you know, trades that I did um, and, uh, a, you know, a losing trade that I had as well. And, you know, again, just keeping it simple, you know, just showing that, you know, the process works and whether we're in a super fast market for longs or a, a super slow market for longs, um, you know, the process will always prevail. Risk management will always prevail. So without further ado, I'm just going to get into the video. Um, I don't think it'll be too, too long. It's just really just some overall process and just house cleaning tips. So this one BLRX, this is one from Friday. Um, I ended up I ended up kind of making a plan on it and saying, okay, what line do I want to pick that could trap shorts the most? Um, in the morning, I didn't really want to long it, and the reason why, um, unless we had a really clear break over 130, which we really didn't, I wasn't really interested in it. And I kind of said that in the morning, like over 230, could we could have some fireworks, but you know. In my opinion, a lot of short sellers were kind of afraid in this area, so I didn't really want to go long there because I knew that we didn't really have that many people uh, trapped. And also, you know, we didn't we we didn't have anyone trapped up here. We were super super strong. We were strong, but we weren't like moving higher. And I mean, for me, I was just saying uh, it wasn't a it wasn't an area that I was really looking for. Um, so I just kind of let it be. We kind of came down to this area. Um, and I was just kind of using kind of the pre-market chart as a guide. We started kind of moving up a little bit. I took some at 212 and we had this kind of VWAP test here and I kind of expected this to reject and I was either going to sell on a pop or just stop out for a loss. But we ended up just getting super, super strong here. Some volume just came in and we, we tested this kind of 240 level again. There was a seller at 240. Everyone was calling him out in chat. So, I mean, I was out at 236 and I mean, this is a pretty straightforward trade. Obviously, it did zombie later, but I mean, this week was kind of an exhausting week, and it wasn't necessarily because of losing or anything. It it was just it it was just a choppy week. Um, I was just tired. The seasons are changing. Um, I'm like a little bit under the weather, like kind of not feeling well. So, I'm just taking the small scalps as they come, and I mean, I'm not really worrying about anything else. Um, this is one that, um, you know. It was it was a pretty pretty good one, and I mean you can't really complain at all. Um, just pretty pretty straightforward price action, and um, yeah, I just, was just really playing kind of under VWAP where I thought some FOMO shorts would short. I mean everyone who's short is afraid to short into this action. They see this kind of candle, they start going short, hoping for it to be a fader. Um, kind of price action starts reversing. All these people are forced to cover. We kind of get higher, and that was really my idea on it. Um, with this one, MGI, again, um, these two were kind of running simultaneously. Um, this one, I saw, by the time I saw it, it was kind of 575, and, you know, I, I didn't really want to chase up there. I said, you know, if this goes, it goes without me. I mean, I'm at a point now in my career where I just really don't care. And, I mean, I think that that serves me, serves me super, super well because I really don't care if this goes to seven or eight or nine. I, I realize that I can either get a small scalp with this one or I can just catch the next one. But honestly, I really don't care. Um, you know, it, it can go without me. So basically, we kind of we kind of moved higher. We got this kind of candle and I expected this to kind of fade. I mean, after you see a candle like this, you need to expect that this stock is going to fade and that it's going to be done and that, you know, you shouldn't be longing it. But again, we get this kind of consolidation under view app, similar to my BLRX trade, where, you know, a lot of people play it kind of by the Bible, where they're like, if it's under view app, I want to short. I want to short only under view app. But unfortunately, in a scenario like this, 
um, you're kind of longing into a first bounce scenario. And we see the kind of first bounce friends area right here. And I didn't go long right away. I kind of waited a little bit uh, for this to kind of get a little bit kind of higher. And, um, you know, I, 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 I knew that we probably needed to test view app and then come back down. And we kind of tested it here. We came back down. We should have definitely went below here, but we didn't. We held on. So I was like, okay, I'll just take some kind of risking this low. It's pretty low risk risk reward. I mean, for the most part, like you're not really risking that much on a, on a play like this. So, I mean, I just said, you know what, I'll take some and... Uh, we ended up kind of moving higher. Once we get over VWAP, you know that this is kind of the shorts. Shorts are, are underwater after they shorted under this candle, for sure. If you wanted to, you could have probably bought some over VWAP too. Just basically saying, I know that a lot of people were short underneath VWAP. They're going to get trapped. And I mean, this ended up kind of moving higher up into high day. I ended up getting out at like 7, 8. Um, I know I sold some up here. I, I waited a little bit because I said, listen, this could, you know, potentially test high day, could potentially go over. So, I mean, I ended up just selling the rest up here and then it ended up fading. But I mean, this is another key, key trap scenario where this should have went lower. Anytime something should have done something and it just does the opposite, it's usually a great long trade. I've had discussions with a ton of long traders across the board where if we get a death candle and we start grinding higher, that shouldn't do that. That should just make a new low almost immediately in the next, especially in the next five minutes. And in this type of scenario, again, we're kind of grinding underneath view app, grinding underneath view app. And you know, all the dumb short sellers are just shorting weakness, shorting weakness. And um, I mean, we ended up stopping them out. And I think the key was definitely this candle where we kind of, we tried to go higher, we couldn't. But also, it's another one of those kind of bait, fake stuff moves where, um, you know, I mean, that was just about it for me. It's pretty, pretty. Uh... Hey, guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Just process trade and I mean, uh, on to the next one. You, you, you. This one was a very, very tricky one. Um, in the morning, I, I didn't want to long it because I knew that there were a lot of chat rooms. There were some pumpers involved. Um, I don't really like buying into strength by any means at all. Uh, the weakness gives me great risk reward, and it also allows me to be patient. I was watching this line, this line, and this line. Uh, we ended up kind of getting down here, again, consolidating underneath VWAP. Um, kind of similar to my MGI trade, actually, where we're consolidating underneath view app. We should be breaking down. We're not. I knew we had a ton of support down here in this area. Um, we ended up kind of coming higher. Um, you know, I was just kind of selling up here. We ended up kind of going lower again. Um, and it's more so that, like, obviously, there was a buyer down here at this... Uh, in this kind of 425 area. I never got 425 exactly. I tried to short, or I tried to long, sorry, as, as low as I could towards 425, but um, it was really a jumpy type of price action. And when it's super jumpy, I don't mind going 10 cents higher and just saying, okay, I'm just gonna risk the 425 area. So basically I was just kind of longing, selling into pop, longing. Obviously this should have definitely broke the support area. It didn't, you know, longing. This should have broke down as well, longing. And just kind of just selling into the pops. And um, obviously this should have broke high a day. It didn't. I was a little bit upset. I had a target for kind of over high a day. But when we couldn't, you know, I knew that I had to probably take some off. Um, and then um, and then over here just kind of uh, was longing it again. I ended up getting stopped out for like, you know, not, not a terrible loss over here. But I mean, that's just it. Um, obviously, you're going to have losses, but you just got to really keep them manageable. I did go long Pola during this as well, because I really didn't expect this to kind of keep going, but, you know, it did. Um, you know, so I kind of went long Pola in between. I didn't I didn't post the Pola chart, because, I mean, Pola was another one where it's just like kind of up, down, up, down, up, down. So, I mean, that was really about it. Um, not really... Uh, not really anything crazy and uh, yeah just you know sticking to process again I'm not going long into strength I like I think you guys need to remember that like you know do not go long into this this pump action the strength that's garbage to me like I'm just gonna wait I'm gonna wait for my kind of non FOMO support lines down here if we keep going to seven or eight that doesn't matter I've missed it I'm out of it that's okay 
Um, I knew that this one was going to be a choppy one, even just looking from the price action around here. You know, it's just a choppy, choppy trade. And it's something that, you know, I, I'm really not interested in, 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 in fooling around with stuff up here when we have the pumpers involved and everyone involved. I'm just going to wait for my kind of non-FOMO lines. And that's really about it. Um, GRIL, again, this one's kind of... Uh, uh, a scalp trade. I ended up taking it kind of around here, I believe, and we were just kind of grinding higher. I mean, I didn't, I, I, I don't think I went long and around here. It, it, it came back down, and I mean, after we get a candle like this, we should not be back at VWAP, guys. Like, we should not be back at VWAP. And again, tries to wash out, tries to go lower, just couldn't. So I took some uh, and just sold up into 5.8. And I mean, that was kind of it. This was kind of my, my target or kind of this line as well. But I mean, once we had some chat room pumpers getting involved with it later in the day, once we had some, you know, long starting to chase, we had some shorts who were kind of stuck below view app that, that kind of got forced to cover. Um, especially it's kind of hard after you maybe have an average of underneath view app underneath here, you get this candle and then the stock starts going against you. I mean, that sucks. But I mean, what can you do? Stock rebounds, we're kind of in a nail and bell market on both sides, you know, especially after we kind of get up here, there was a bunch of a bunch of sellers kind of up here. I'm just selling with the sellers. And I mean, that was really about it. You know, it's just process process. I'm not, I'm not fooling around with the strength over here. I would rather it come back down and you know, get it on kind of the reclaim type of area type of setup. And that was just what I was kind of looking for. Um, so this is something that I really wanted to try and uh, talk about because this is one of the, the key things that I have been getting a question about. This is something that everyone keeps asking me about is how do I like to trade these view app reclaims? And um, I think that uh, there's a lot of people who like to buy the strength into the reclaim, but I don't really like to buy the strength into the reclaim. And uh, this is kind of why. So basically, as you see from underneath here, um, I don't really have any trades above VWAP. Um, I don't have a trade above VWAP here. I don't have a trade above VWAP here. I don't have a trade above VWAP here. And I don't have a trade above VWAP here. Now, why would that be? Why is that? Well, the reason why I don't have any trades above VWAP is because you can look. I usually kind of tend to sell above VWAP, right? I'm selling above VWAP here, selling above VWAP here. I'm selling above VWAP in all these scenarios except for when I got stopped out. I'm selling above VWAP here. And so why would I want to sell above VWAP into that strength and, and kind of anticipate the reclaim? And I mean, there's a couple reasons. Number one is that I know that short sellers have VWAP as the ultimate risk. If you're short under VWAP, you know that when it gets above VWAP, you're kind of trapped or you're kind of stuck. And so what I like to kind of do is I like to kind of hedge my bet a little bit. And what I mean by that is instead of going long, there's two things that can happen at VWAP. And one thing that I've noticed that happens a lot is VWAP is a level that loves to reject. It's a, it's a very, very hard level to get by. Even if you get by it, you, you need to get by it by like a dollar or two. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I also do do calls. I don't know why this has just been new. I post all the time in chat that I'm doing calls. Um, I've, I seem to do calls with quite a bit of members, but there's been some people who are like, oh, I didn't know that you did calls. Yes, I do calls. Um, so, I mean, I do post in chat, you know. Um, I just, I'm usually at a point now where I just have a lot of regular people who have been in MIC for a while, just schedule calls with me all the time. So if you didn't know that I do calls, send me a message, hit me up, um, and we can definitely talk. Um, so happy Halloween guys, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.